Hi. Back in week five of this course, we had a look at voltage dividers and I did a lot of work on the tutorial for that and then made that into a Camtasia video. Um, now it's time to go through and have a look at the homework that was set and how to solve that homework. Just to uh, review what was in the homework, there was a SK10 board on the front page and then uh, we started off with a fairly elaborate voltage divider with a lot of outputs but no load resistance. And then we added a quite complex uh, voltage divider which had two load resistances and you were required to uh, work out the load currents. And then towards the end of the, uh, the book on the homework there was a printed circuit board question and it had a uh, edge connector socket the edge connector socket had various outputs and it had one link on it and you were required to go through and work out the actual schematic diagram for that and then calculate the unloaded outputs and calculate the loaded outputs for that uh, and you were given some load resistances uh, in that sheet as well. So I've decided to do this last question in this video series and I'll make it in two parts, part A and part B. So today I'll just look at part A and in part A we will in fact have a close look at this printed wiring or printed circuit board and we'll break that down and draw the schematic diagram and then go on to do the mathematics required to work out the, uh, the voltages at each point. That is uh, V bias, V decade and V sound. Interesting board, the actual board is called a uh, McDonnell Douglas FA18 Hornet Instrument Cluster Voltage Distribution Card 34B3A. Uh, that's a pretty exciting sort of a thing to be, uh, to be working on today. So uh, without any further ado, let's uh, get on with that then and just see what we've got in front of us. So here's some uh, orange chalk and I guess 91 volts comes into the card. So that's going to be where I start with this. I mean there's many places where I could have started but I, I think 91 volts is where I'm, I'm at. So plus 91 volts comes into the card. And um, that comes in on pin 2. So I'm going to label that as pin 2. And then pin 2, I have to come down here, find pin 2. Pin 2 comes up, picks up a 220 ohm resistor. 220. The 220 comes along, picks up a 330 ohm resistor. 330. And there's nothing at the junction there, so he gets the tick, he's fine. But where the pin 2 meets the 220, there is something happening. There's another wire coming out there which goes to a 330 ohm resistor. 330, and that 330 ohm resistor uh, looks like it just jumps across three tracks, then comes down, comes out of pin 12, And then it also goes through a 470 ohm to pin 14 and pin 18. Fourteen and eighteen. So you can see it's a skill in doing this and there's no shortcuts, you just have to do it little bit by little bit and try and tick things off on the circuit as you go. I'll, I'll do some of the work from the actual sheet and I'll do some of the work uh, uh, from the the board. I mean this again I was going to do this with Camtasia but I decided I wanted a bit more room to uh, spread myself out to make the, the video for this. Um, I think I'm pretty right with that one then. No, I've got this 330 which hasn't ended up going anywhere yet. 
220, 3.30. 3.30 actually comes, that's this 3.30 here, comes up and it meets a 5.60 which comes down to pin 5. Ooh. 5.60 and he comes out on pin 5. Um, but we're not out of the woods yet. 3.30. Comes along, meets the 560, then it also goes across the top, comes down here. If you've got a, a coloured pencil or something, it'd be nice to colour this in as you did it. Come down and comes out of pin 7. So that's the junction between the two of these. comes out of pin 7. Alright. So far so good. So we've covered this pin 1 was where we started and um, pin 1 jumps across to pin 5. So maybe what I'll do at this point in the drawing I might put a nice big loop around this to show that that's just my first part of the drawing. And then um, pin two, pin one. Oh, where's pin one? Pin one is connected to, okay. Different color, pin one. Pin one comes into the board, comes up, goes through a 220 ohm resistor. And at that junction of the 220 ohm there, it also comes up. The track continues down to pick up a zero ohm resistor. These resistors are interesting. The zero ohm resistor is uh, actually a link on the board. It's probably been put on the board to uh, remove to measure a specific current while the circuit's in operation and then that uh, fusible link perhaps it is of zero ohms uh, put back into the board after the measurement is done that'd be one key reason why that's there and um, zero ohms 220 ohms comes out pin 11 220. Um, pin 1 comes in, picks up the original 220 though. That original 220 comes across and joins up with a 560. At the junction where it meets that 560, it comes down and comes out of pin 8. pin 8. The other side of the 560 comes down to pin 22. Mm, I might have to bridge across my circuit here. Twenty two. So these are obviously not, not connected, they're jumpers. Jumps over those wires. Uh, let's just check that. Pin 1 comes up, goes into a 220, which picks up a 560. 560 comes out of 22. Junction comes down to pin 8. Pin 1 also, uh, where it picks up the 220, comes down, picks up a fusible link and comes out of 220 at pin number 11. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That's the second lot of circuitry that I solved. So I'll put another box around that. Pin number five. This is interesting. Pin number one is connected to pin number five. So where does this pin number five go to? Pin number five on the board is here. Pin five comes up and goes into a 560. 
Oh, we already had that. There it is there, isn't it? Pin number five. So pin number one is connected up into pin number five. And this is a link, an external link on our socket system. Um, all right, so first output is V bias comes out of five, six, seven, pin number seven. Pin number seven, let's use a nice dark blue color for that. Pin number seven. Pin seven comes out and that's called V bias. Seven, eight, pin number eight comes out called V decade. These wires all go to some other distribution in the aircraft, no doubt. Uh, pin 8, pin 9, 10, 11. Pin 11 comes out to V sound. And it's starting to sound like it's probably... As we saw, it was a VD card, voltage distribution card, so no doubt it's a voltage divider of some type. And uh, when we draw the schematic for this, we're going to see uh, that voltage divider uh, start to appear in front of us. Because a lot of these resistors um, are probably not being used that are on the board, and uh, we're only interested in the resistors that make up the voltage divider um, today. and, and uh, get the voltages at the individual points. Pin number 22 is ground. Pin number 22 is ground. Let's use a nice orange for that. Um, look, everybody's going to draw that circuit a little bit differently. Um, I probably should have started a bit higher up on the board. I've crammed myself in a little bit at the bottom. Um, you'd think I'd know to do that by now. But anyway, we all make little mistakes. So nevertheless, we have the general layout now of the board in a schematic diagram, which is so much different than the actual board wiring diagram. And this is done in every industry. It doesn't matter whether it's auto electrical industry, aircraft industry, refrigeration industry. Every person that works with electrical circuitry or electronic circuitry has to open something up to service it, encounter this wiring, maybe it's a bunch of boards with a socketing system all joined together, and trace the wiring through. So this ability to trace wiring is a very important skill in this industry. All right, so we're ready to simplify that now. We've got our basic schematic diagram, but if I stand back and look at that, I still don't really understand what's happening. So. I'm going to uh, try and put that into something a little bit neater. Now, looking at our circuit, 12, 14, and 18, we don't use. We've got nothing connected to those. I'll just double check my pins here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes, we don't use any of these, so we can knock those out completely. So 91 volts, and I'll, I'll come over here to do this. 91 volts, comes in, goes through a 220. Tick. Picks up a 330. Tick. Picks up a 560 and comes out of pin 5. pin 5, also from that point there, comes along to pin 7, so where the 330 joins the 560, that's pin 7, pin 7 is an output which is called the bias. Um, the end of the 560, pin 5, there's that link that goes across to pin 1, and pin 1 goes through a 220. I'll put pin 1 
there, pin one and pin five. 220, I've done that. After the 220, we come out to pin eight. V bias. Two twenty pin eight five sixty to pin twenty two. Because I know I remember pin twenty two was ground five sixty. Pin number one we've got a zero ohm uh, fusible link and a two twenty ohm. Zero. 220 and that point there is connected to V sound V sound there now we can kind of ignore this first schematic diagram that I had and what I've got in blue on this side of the board is the actual circuit. 91 volts at the top. One, two, three, four, five resistors in that nice voltage divider. And we've got um, an output here called V bias, an output here called V sound. Got a 220 series resistor uh, before V sound. So later on, there's gonna be a little bit extra maths to work out the voltage at that point. Uh, and V bias, this one here. So it's a simple voltage divider. All right, let's have a look at what we've got to do. 220, 330, 560, 220, All right, first thing we've got to do in this part one of the video is to add up all of the resistors. So we need to add 220 to 330 to 560, 220, 560, and uh, I've already done that in advance to get uh, an R total of 1890 ohms. RT, 1890 ohms. And that's all of those added together. And then of course, I need to work out the current which is traveling down through there. And that's gonna be called, I got a specific name, I, bleed that's the eye bleed current coming down through there and there was a there was a special question in the uh, paper that said calculate the bleed resistance and calculate the bleed current so i've gone ahead and i've already done that we had 91 volts and we had to divide it by 1890 ohms to find the bleed current which was 48.1481 milliamps oh where can i put that we'll squeeze it in over here 48.1481 milliamps. And I've been caught out before with some of these voltage dividers that if you don't put enough digits after the decimal place, things don't add up at the other end. So you've got to be a little bit careful to make sure you've got enough digits there in your answer. Then once we know the current coming down through our bleed resistance, all we have to do is multiply it by that 560 ohms and that'll give us the voltage across the 560 ohms. And that of course is called V bias. So 48.1481 milliamps multiplied by 560 to give me the V bias of 26.96 volts. 26.96. Volts. And then when I want to work out this V sound, all I have to do is add that 220 to that 560 to get what's that? 780 ohms. Multiply that by 780 ohms. That'll give me the voltage at that point there. These, of course, are unloaded voltages. Very, very easy to work out. So that V sound worked out to be. 780 times that 14.1481 milliamps, 37.555. 37.555 volts at that point there. Then finally, we had to add the 560 
to that 780 to get a resistance of 1340 ohms and I'll just put that in brackets here I've got 1340 ohms with respect to ground from here to ground so that 1340 ohms I have to multiply by 48.1481 milliamps and that will finally give me for V bias um, 64.51 volts 64.51 volts um, there was one last calculation to do and it's not too obvious when I first looked at the circuit but um, pin 18 pin 18 on this pin 18 I can see that there is something happening at pin 18 there and um, it was one of the questions in the table when we look at the table it actually asks me for unloaded voltage at pin 5, pin 1 and pin 18 so originally I put a stroke through that and I said I don't need it but now I take a closer look at it and I say ooh maybe I do need it so um, the voltage at pin 18 if I've drawn that correctly should just be 91 volts unloaded let's just check that I've done that correctly though um, pin 2 comes in and we want to find our way through to pin 18 18 470 330 back up to pin 2 yes that's correct so the voltage at pin 18 equals 91 volts and I'm going to write here next to it unloaded all of those voltages are unloaded the minute that we uh, add loads to those uh, points and in the paper it explains what you have to do uh, I think it says here uh, you've got 12k resistance from V bias to ground 6.8k from uh, V decade to ground etc you have to put all of those load resistances in and then there's going to be a stack of calculations to do so we'll go ahead and we'll do those calculations in part two of this video on the voltage divider question this has been Greg Moore for TAFE New South Wales uh, answering the homework questions for UEE NEEE 104A okay I hope that helps see you next time